Hello there. This is going to be a video demo slash build guide for my Wormhammer build. This build aims to take maximum advantage of the newly buffed Barracks Respite Ring, which if you don't know what that does, it's basically Beano's but for Ignites. So whenever you kill an ignited enemy, you inflict an equivalent ignite on each nearby enemy. So it just spreads your ignites on kill. This build has a lot of moving parts, so I'm going to hop into this shaped uh, courtyard here and talk about how it all works. Once this map loads up. So, we are a cast on crit ignite build uh, with Vortex as our ignite skill. Vortex is converted to fire using the Cold to Fire gem and Avatar of Fire. And the ignites spread because of Barracks Respite. <laughs> But it's important to note that they only spread on kill, which is why we're using the Worm Flask. Uh, the Worm Flask, we instantly kill the worms with the Ignites, and that is what uh, allows us to inflict a bunch of Ignites on enemies using Barracks Respite. We're also using Ember Wake so that we can inflict up to 300 Ignites instead of only one. And that's the basic functionality of the build, is to use the Writhing Jar with Barracks Respite and Ember Wake to inflict a bunch of double dipping ignites. So these ignites are further buffed by our dual curses. We are using flammability and elemental weakness. And actually with the Writhing Jar, these curses don't merely double dip, they do in fact triple dip. And the way that that works is that, uh, so, we pop out a worm. The worm has lower resist because of the curses. So the worm takes more damage from the vortex. The worm also takes more damage from the ignite from the vortex. And then when the worm dies and spreads the ignite, the, en the target enemy also has lower resist because of our dual curse. So we're getting triple use out of our elemental curses and that's why it is triple dipping. Since we are spamming so many worms all the time, we get a ton of on-kill effects, and uh, that also fuels a, a few other syn synergies in the build. We're using the Green Dream and the Red Dream, uh, which is where our Endurance and Frenzy charges come from. Uh, but not only that, but actually, we get uh, Fizz Immunity, because we're using Cast on Crit Vengeance. So we have permanent Endurance Charge up time, and we have Cast on Crit Immortal Call. Our Endurance Charges, we have four Endurance Charges, which leads to about a three second Immortal Call. Immortal Call has a three second cooldown, so that's pretty much cost enough time whenever we get hit, which isn't always. We're also using the Gull, so we spawn all these shrines all the time. Um, this actually isn't that strong, because you, you get them just from killing stuff, but it is nice to have them up against bosses. It can be pretty useful. And then we also have Lab Enchant. So our Boot Enchant is the Leech Boot Enchant. It is uh, life and mana leech on kill. And then we're also using Commandment of Inferno. Commandment of Inferno is that giant meteor that you see slamming into things every once in a while. It does about four times as much damage as our Vortex. So it's pretty decent. Uh, if you're going to do this build, I would highly recommend that you run Uber Lab and get that enchant. It's not that rare. And um, it kind of functions as a second single target setup, because we get kills so regularly. This build is a little bit laggy because of all the burn prolific and stuff, but also my internet connection is not the best. So we're trying to pop the Worm Flask as often as possible. And the way we were doing that is by being a Pathfinder, of course. Uh, but not only that, but we were using the Overflowing Chalice. So, we get a bunch of crits, which is what procs our Vortex. 
And that is what refills our flasks because of Pathfinder. And then with Overflowing Chalice, our flask return is doubled because we have 60% charge recovery on the tree and we have 150% uh, recovery from the chalice. So it's a total of 310% uh, recovery from what we would normally have. But it actually does a little more than that, and I actually think Overflowing Chalice is completely necessary on Pathfinder builds with the way they changed Surgeons, uh, because not only is it doubling our charge recovery, but it's also reducing the number of flasks to which charges are returning by one. So the way Surgeons works is that five times per second, one of your flasks gains a flask charge. And with five flasks, that is one charge per flask per second. So five charges, five flasks, one charge per flask. But since Overflowing Chalice uh, does not gain any charges while it's in use, uh, that reduces it to four charges, which is a 25% increase in our flask charge return. So it's it's pretty good. Um, so it doubles flask return just from its effect, and then because we're not using that flask slot for surgeons, uh, it's actually a 2.5 times multiplier on our flask return. And again, pardon, pardon my bad internet connection. Um, so yeah, I think it's completely necessary. Uh, other than that, we're using two worm flasks. We would be using more, but you can only have five flasks. Uh, and we're using the wise oak, which gives us about as much damage as a worm flask, uh, but it also helps even more against curse-resistant bosses and stuff. Um, and then we're using a Quicksilver of Adrenaline just to move really fast. Uh, so that was that map. I'll go ahead and talk about the gear that I'm using. So the hammer of the Worm Hammer build is the Trypanon Mace. Uh, this thing always crits whenever you hit anything, which prevents us from needing crit, you know, any crit investment at all. Otherwise, we just need some accuracy. But even that you don't really need, because you just spam really short cyclones and hit things often enough that way. Um, I already mentioned the rings, we're using Emberwake and Barracks for Spite. Uh, the helmet I already mentioned, the gull, we're using Calms. Right now I'm using Biscos, because I'm just spamming low tier maps for the, uh, for the challenge, but usually I use this Talisman. This thing gives me like 600, 600 life, so that's pretty good, but um, really any uh, any amulet would work, just whatever you want to get on there, damage, life resists. Um, accuracy is nice, I've also got accuracy on my gloves. Uh, it's mostly good for enfeeble maps where your accuracy is lower, but as I said, it's it's not like make or break, because you just you spam so many cyclones all the time. Um, so rare gloves and boots with the enchants. Um, Command of Midim Inferno, again, it's like really good. And a flask belt. You just need the 20% or 19% reduced class charges used, and that's really the only stat you absolutely need. Everything else is just resists life, whatever you can get. I need strength to equip the counts, so I got a strength belt, but whatever you want on, on belt besides the charges used. For the passive tree, you just start out as ranger, get the flask stuff, get some life. Um, this node is pretty nice. The life recovery from flasks, again, is like how we sustain life on the build. Uh, get some jewels. This is where I put the red dream, just rare jewels. Uh, curse effect. And then you go up here to get most of your damage. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I put some leveling advice in the build guide thread, which you can check out. I put the link in the description. Um, or just more specifics about my gear and stuff like that. So check out the thread. I hope you enjoyed the build. And uh, if you try it, <laughs> let me know. So happy farming.